Good afternoon clients and welcome to today's online training webinar. My name is Sati Dub and I am one of the client success managers here at Leap UK. In today's webinar, we will be helping you with all the necessary steps you need to take in order to complete a full financial year end in Leap. I plan to cover the following areas on your client account. How to clear your dormant client balances. How to finalise your client to office transfers. How to post your financial transactions, that's your payments and your receipts. How to reconcile your client account. And the last thing I'll be going through is how to run end of month for your client account. On the office account, I'll, I will also be covering the following areas. How to run a matter balances report and the reason for this. How to run an age debtors report for your fee earners. How to apply credit notes to outstanding invoices. How to clear any non-recoverable old disbursements. How to lock your office account in LEAP. Before I start today's webinar, I would like to let you know you're able to post questions online. If you have any questions around the contents of today's webinar, please post your questions to us. I will be answering all your questions at the end of training. Okay, let's start. Let's start on the client account year end process. Now, for me, I would recommend that the first step you do is clear your dormant client account balances. It's important for you to keep track of your client balances. So I'm going to run off a dormant client account balances report. And that can be done by clicking on the reports menu above over here and open a new reports window. And once you've done that, you'll see that you've got the client funds tab. And within the client's funds, funds tab, you'll see that on the left hand side, you've got the ability to run off a dormant matter with client account balances. Now, this will list any inactive matters in the system um, that haven't had any movement for a certain period of time. And you've got the ability to select the period of time that you want to find out that information for. So I will run that for six months and click on view report. And now you'll notice that you've got the ability to see the report on screen. Um, if you've got multiple client accounts, you can run that for, for them as well if you need to. And you've also got the ability to group this by acting personal responsible person if you need to. Now, the purpose of this report is actually just allowing you to identify if there is any matters that have not had any movement on the client ledger. So you'll notice that this particular case, Andrew Williams, has not had any movement since um, the 22nd of November 2016. Now, considering that there's £48,000 in there, you may want to go in and have a look at that ledger to figure out why. Now, th 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 there could be a completely justified reason for that. Or, you know, there may be an outstanding bill that you need to do on the particular case. Or you may need to refund this balance to the client. Or you may need to donate the money to charity on written authorization from the SRA. Now, you need to just check that with the SRA and what their guidelines are. So you may need to let them know that you've got, you're holding some balances on your client ledgers and they will let you know what necessary steps to take. So that's the first thing I would do is just go through this particular report and make sure that um, the, the balances that are in your client ledgers are there for a reason. So once you've tidied that up, the next thing you can do is finalise your client to office transfers. So again, within the client's funds tab, you'll notice that on the right hand side over here, you've got the potential client to office transfer listing. So if I run that off at the moment, you're seeing that you've got the ability again to filter that by different bank accounts. If you've got multiple bank accounts, you can select them. Or if you've just got one like me that I'm working on at the moment, 
you can just select that from there, click on view report and it will run that for you. Right, so on the left hand side, you can see that you've got the matter details. Um, within there, you've got a drop down option. So if you click on that, it would expand uh, the information within that particular matter. So you can see that there's two different um, invoice numbers attached to this particular case. On the right hand side, you can see the outstanding invoice amount. Now, you, all, you can also identify that there is uh, protected funds available for £20. Now, that seems a bit strange considering that there's no client um, funds available there. So you may want to go into that particular ledger and have a look at that. It would be a good time for you guys to go in and um, clear this up on your potential client to office transfer listing. Now, the matter below, you'll notice that you've got um, a client funds available balance of £100. And you've also got an invoice outstanding for £129. So you may want to transfer that £100 towards the bill that you've got outstanding, which is bill 570. And then the next thing you may want to do is go in and maybe write off that particular £29 that is outstanding. And this is a fairly new um, invoice that was raised in 2018 for February, but you may have historical stuff now today well during this period at the end of um, the financial year is a good time for you guys to go in and have a look at all of these balances that you've got lying around and clear them out now once you run off this report the next step would be to actually action the balances that are there and you can go in and click on the client accounting tab within leap and click on client to office transfer and once you've selected that, you'll notice that the client to office transfer screen will open up. So this would allow you to select the account that you're going to credit the balances into. So if you were going to put that into the office account, you would select that from the drop down menu. And once you've done that, you'll notice that you've got the ability to say how you transferred the funds, just like you normally would do a, a client to office transfer. So if you've done that by electronic funds, you can select that from the list and then you would just allocate the amount that you're transferring by applying it. The last step is to obviously save and close this. Now, it may be important for you to go in and, and complete your um, client to office transfers before you do your bank reconciliation for the end of March, if any of them have been included in the bank reconciliation. Again, I would suggest that you go in and check all the invoices that are included in this. And you may need to confirm with VN as the movement of balances towards the outstanding bills that they've got in the system. The next screen I'm going to take you guys uh, and the next step that we're going to go through is how to post your financial transactions. So your payments and receipts in the, in the system. Now, the first step would obviously be to um, print off the bank statement for the period and check that all the transactions are posted into Leap. Now, did you know that you can run you can run a bank account register on the client account, which should really uh, be a, like an electronic copy of your uh, bank statement? And how you can do that is if you click on um, client accounting just above over here, you'll see that you've got the bank account register. And if I open that up, you'll notice in a second you can see all the transactions that have been posted. See, in my system, I've completed a bank reconciliation for February and completed the end of month process. So my system is up to date. What this would this screen allows you to do is see the, what the transactions that are outstanding for a, a period. So at the moment, I've got March, but you could extend that into February or January if you need to. And it allows you to see all the debits, so all the deposits and the with, withdrawals that have happened on your client account. And this is on screen, so it might be handy for you to look at this while you're looking at your bank account statement. Now, on the right hand side, you can also see the balance. Um, the other thing you can see is if you've already marked that off the bank, recon bank reconciliation as reconciled, well, to be reconciled. So I have got some transactions that I haven't marked off just yet and they haven't got a tick next to them. But I'm going to be going into the bank reconciliation in a second. Within this screen, if you have missed a transaction that's on your bank statement, it's probably quite handy for you to go in and record it. 
And I'm not sure if any of you used this before, but you have got the ability to go in and complete a new receipt. So if I wanted to go in, I can say where that receipt has come in from. I can say the payment type of how I received those funds. And I can allocate it to the matter that it needs to go to. And then I can put in a reason for that transaction. And on the right hand side, I can say the amount that I received. Now I can save and close this. And I've also got the ability to go in and print a copy of the receipt if I need to. But I'm not going to do that because I've already set up my account balances so I can do a reconciliation for you guys online. The other thing that you could do is go in and record a new payment. Again, if you fill in the details like who it's payable to, and you can say the payment type, the matter number that is associated with the reason and the amount that you want to take out, you can save and close that transaction into the system as well. Now, once you've done this, the next thing you can go in, if you've recorded multiple receipts that have been received by cash and check is really important that you go in and complete the bank deposit and a lot of firms ask me why do you need to complete a, complete a, a bank deposit you're just letting leap know and the system know that these transactions that you've recorded into the system like a check or cash that you've bought that has come into your firm has actually been banked it's just like filling in the paying in slip that you would do at the bank the important thing here is to make sure you bank the transactions for the correct date. Now, for example, this could have all been um, banked in on the 23rd of March 2018. It's really important, sorry, the 27th, the 27th of March 2018. It's really important that you put in the correct transaction date because these transactions not, will not be reconcilable until that date, the transaction date, is what hits the bank reconciliation. Once you clicked on save and close, this will produce a bank deposit in the system. You only need to do bank deposits for anything that you received by cash or check from a client, just like you would fill in the paying in slip. So this is the bank account register in Leap, and you may find that handy. And this screen should really match your bank statement. Right, the next thing we're going to do is, now that we've um, identified all the transactions within the bank account register, we're going to go in and complete a bank reconciliation. And how you can do that is by clicking on Client, Reconcile Account, and it takes you to the bank reconciliation screen. Now on the right hand side, you'll notice that my period is for the end of March. I've also got the bank statement balance already um, entered into the system. I've also got a variance of 44,000. Um, below over here, you can see that I've got an addition added for 1,000. Now what's the purpose of having additions in Leap? Uh, Leap would generally, um, what I would say is additions is only used for transactions that you've received into your bank that you are unsure of which matter that they belong to. So that normally would happen, for example, if a client has paid you some client funds into your client bank account and hasn't put a matter number against it. So you'll see that I've already added one in for the 15th of March 2018. It's a bank transfer for Barclays and the client didn't put any bank uh, any matter number against it. So I've put in a deposit for 1000 because that's going to help me reconcile. In Leap you are able to um, reconcile for transactions that you may have received from the bank and um, they're not allocated to a matter. In the following month, the goal would be to actually identify the matter that this transaction belongs to, allocate it to that matter, and then delete it from the screen. Now, below over here, you'll notice that you've got all the transactions that I've previously marked off. And if I click on the date field, I'm just going to filter this in a different way. So I've got all my current transactions. And as I know that these have all hit my bank statement, I'm going to go in and tick them all off. Now you'll notice that my variance is now zero because I have reconciled all the accounts, all, all the transactions that I've hit my bank statement. I could save this for later and the uh, handy thing about doing this is if I know that I, in April I may come back 
um, after Easter to the office and something may have been posted overnight today or over the weekend but I doubt that because banks are going to be closed but if that does happen you've got the ability to go in here and um, add those transactions in so by saving it for later would mean that you, you've got the ability to go in and reconcile at a later date or you may want to click on um, reconcile which is what I'm going to do right now and that would reconcile this bank account for you now, if you've got multiple bank accounts, the goal would be to do this on all your bank accounts um, and get it signed off. OK, you may want to print this off or file it electronically. We would recommend that you file it electronically. Right. Once you've done that. We've now completed a bank reconciliation in Leap. The next thing we can do is go in and generate the end of month reports. So in order to do that. You just need to open up the reports menu and you'll notice that within client funds, I have got the client account end of month reports. Now I can run off the general end of month by clicking on this option here. It's probably not going to work because I've just done it. Let me just close out of here and rerun that reports, open new reports window. It's probably because I just had this screen open while I completed a bank reconciliation. So it just needs to register that that's been done. Now I reconciled for the, the month of the 30 for the month of March and I used the date the 31st of March 2018. So I can't actually generate the report in here. If I had used today's date, I would have had the option to run off a report. You click on that option and I'll show you where those reports are saved and you would do that again with your accounts end of month as well again you can select the different multiple bank accounts and you should have an option like this one end of month but because I've reconciled for the 31st of March 2018 I'm not able to actually click on it until the 31st of, of March 2018 now once you've done that and you've run off those reports you'll notice that it will save those reports in view previous client account end of months and within here if i click on 2018 you will see the march one as well on the 31st of march 2018 so over here on the february one you can see that within um client funds end of month reports you can see that they we have got the client accounts audit report and we've also got the separate designated client account list of accounts so if i click on the client account audit report rather than me having to run the report because i've already saved it within here um it's ready there so i don't need to worry about going in and putting date parameters and so on because the system has saved them for ease of access and within the accounting side You've got the ability to select 2018, like I said, February, and then it would allow me to run off the client account journal report, the client account trial balance, the client account cash book, the client account receipts. Now, firms usually ask me what's the difference between the month uh, end reports here and the client account month end reports. Well, the general end of month reports, all it does, it generates a client and matter audit report and a separate designated client account report. Whereas the end of month reports closes off your accounts and stores the reports and the reports it stores are just listed below. The client account journal report, the, the trial balance, the client payments cash book, the client's receipt cash book. Now it's handy for you to attach these reports to your bank reconciliation and keep them in a safe place. Once you've done this, you have then completed your end of month process for your client account. Right, we're now going to move on to how to complete the office account month end process. You will now need to take the... Um, we will now look at all the necessary steps you need to take on your office account to complete your firm's year end process I would recommend that your firm starts off by running the matter balances report and that can be found within the office toolbar and over here you just click on that 
And once you've clicked on this, you'll see that the system will generate um, the matter balances report. You have got grouping options. So if you select by person acting, and I'll rerun this report. Now you'll notice it will um, break out this report for distribution methods. So you could send this out to Sarah. But Sarah's only got one matter in the system with just client funds. So let's go to the next page. Now, within the next page, this is where you'll be able to find um, all your cases listed on the left hand side. And you'll be able to see the client funds, any WIP, any um, debtor credits, any credits, cost recoveries and so on. So you notice that there's some WIP here for £48. And I know that I need to write this off or, or mark it as non-billable in, in, in the system. Um, the reason why you would do that is because you don't want to go in and pay any tax for that. So once you've sent this report to your, to your staff, they will advise you on what to do with all the necessary matters. Now you can write off any age whip um, and you can do this within the particular case. So if I open up a matter in Leap right now, And go to the time and free time and fees option you'll notice that there's three whip items that have been recorded into the system now if i know that i'm not going to be able to recover for them i can just select them all by clicking the control key on my keyboard right click on them and mark them as non-billable not billable right this would um stop them from being um invoiced in the future and allow you to close the matter as well if you need to The other thing that you may want to do is apply any credit notes to a debtor invoice. You may want to also um, sh show your fee earners the disbursements that require invoicing. So if I open up that report again, on the right hand side, you can see any disbursements that are allocated to that particular case that require to be billed. Um, if they ask you to invoice those, invoice those disbursements, you can invoice them and then write them off. I'm gonna go through that with you guys in a second. Now, the other option that you do have is to run off an aged debtors report for your fee earners, which just lists their invoices. And that's within the office toolbar over here. And you can, if you click on the aged debtors report, again, if you click on view report, it will bring up all your cases that have got any outstanding invoices associated to them. So let's have a look at this one because it's got a credit there for 65 pounds and 44 pence. So if I expand that, I'll notice that on this particular matter, there's two invoices and there's also an, a credit note. Now I may want to go into this particular case and resolve that. And I can do that by opening up the matter. Going to the office um, accounting ledger and you'll notice that the uh, invoices that we saw in the report are presented on this screen and you can see that there's a credit balance there as well so all i need to do is actually allocate that this credit to that um, particular those two invoices and once i've done that they this this invoice will uh, disappear from the report so i'm going to click on the credits ledger and the credits ledger is going to allow me to identify at glance what i have inside the in the inside the credit side of things and if I click on apply to invoices, all the invoices that are outstanding will appear on this screen. So in this case, I'm going to apply 65 pounds and 44 pence. And that will just um, reduce the balance of the tax invoices. And you'll notice that the credit balance has now gone to zero. If I click on save and close now, those credits have now been applied to the tax invoice. Now, this is really important on cash basis. If you run your firm on cash accounting, that you do apply all your uh, credit notes to tax invoices, because at the, at, the, at the point of receipting is when it will affect your VAT account. Again, you may want to have this all resolved for this particular um, quarter. So if I rerun off this report, you'll notice that that 65, 64 pounds has now been um, excluded from this report. Now, you may have invoices on this report that need to be written off. So if your fee earners go in and they advise you that they need you need to go in and write off some invoices, you can also do that in Leap 
by opening up the matter. And if I go into the office accounting, I've got a tax invoice here for £360. And I know that this is never going to be recoverable. Again, I need to right click on the particular invoice and click on adjust invoice, like so. Now, if your firm is working on accrual basis, this is going to be important. And all you need to do is just click on right off over here. And this will then reduce your VAT. And if I click on save and close. Now, you would only write off an invoice if it's a loss to the firm. So it's important that you, you, you do that if you, if you know that you're not going to be able to recover that debt. So if I right click again and just it's, it's within adjust invoice and you've got the, got the option to write off a tax invoice in NEEP. Now, there may be also disbursements that you have in your cases that you want to mark as written off. And if they are recorded into to leave, they'll either be on the office ledger or in cost recoveries. In order to mark that disbursement as written off, it's important in LEAP, you have to um, invoice it. And you can do that by clicking on new invoice. And it would allow you to identify all the items that you want to include. So I'm going to be not including these. I can just delete them. And I only want to do a disbursement invoice and click on save. Um, I'm going to mark it as final and sent and save and close. So this, now, this disbursement has now been included in an invoice. And once it's been included in an invoice, I can go in and I can right click on the invoice, click on adjust invoice and write the, the invoice off. So that's how you can write off your old disbursements in LEAP. Once you've gone through this process in LEAP and you've cleared up your accounts, the next thing you would really need to do is go in and lock your office account in LEAP. And how you can do that is by clicking on the tools option and selecting options. And once you've selected that, you'll see that you've got the general ledger. And within the general ledger, you've got another option for the, for the general ledger. If you scroll down, just over here, you can lock your periods in LEAP for your office account. And I would want to do that for today's date, like so. Oh, it's 2017. It should be 2018. Like so. And then click on save. You can also put in when your financial year starts as well in Leap within this screen. Now, what's the purpose of me doing this? Well, this will stop anyone from recording any financial transactions in March. And once you've done this, in Leap, you've closed off your office account for March 2018. Right, now we're going to go and have a look at some of the questions that you may have. And I'm just going to open that up and have a look at all the questions you guys have um, put forward to me. If you could just give me a second. Right, we've got a few questions there. I'm just going to have a look at them. How do I think? Right, okay, I've got a question here. Um, our financial year runs from the 8th of April to the 7th of April. I've been told by LEAP to run end of year as this, as the 31st of March. Not sure what I should do. You've got the ability to control that in the screen where it says when, when, when your year end um, starts and ends. So you could just put in those dates in there. Um, I will have a look at that for you um, and get back to you shortly. I've entered the wrong transaction on the date of a new receipt.
Right, if you've dated a receipt for the wrong date, you should be able to go in and reverse that in Leap. Again, what we can do is log on to your system and have a look. So what I will do is after this um, webinar, I will give you a call and get in touch with you um, and try and help you with reversing that transaction for the correct date. But I'm just having a look through some of the other questions. Just give me a second. Oh, yeah, we always try and view, uh, allow all of our webinars to be viewed by our clients after they've um, been completed. So as long as, yeah, I'll, I'll try and get a copy out of the webinar to you. There is a few questions that I wanted to go through with you. Um, what implication does Leap have on zero if you do not lock the journals? That was the last process that I went through. Um, it's important that you do because if you don't lock the journals in Leap for a period and somebody goes in in April and records a transaction for March, that will affect your profit and loss and balance sheet in zero. So there, there is often that I've been approached by clients and they said that they print off their profit and loss and balance sheet in zero. Um, and at a later state, they print it off again and the balances have moved is because they're not locking their accounts in leap. So as soon as you lock your accounts in leap, that would avoid firms from going in and um, entering any transactions for that date. Now, another question that I had is, do you need to invoice WIP to write it off? Now, the easy way around this is to just mark it as non-billable, but you may want to invoice the WIP and then write off the actual tax invoice. Um, the reason why you would do this is because the figures actually go into different places in your performance reports. So in our performance reports against the FIANA, we've got WIP written off, and we've also got um, fees marked as non-billable. Now, if you did um, go in and do a tax invoice for your WIP, it would go in the fees written off section. I'm just having a look through the other questions. Can we have the webinar at a later date? Yes, you can. We'll go through that for you. Okay, um, I've got another question here saying, are there any additional processes for year end and month end? No, not inside Leap. This is all that you need to do. Um, and that's basically it. Um, so I hope you guys are comfortable with all of those uh, processes. Again, um, if you have any questions, just post them over to success at leap.co.uk and I have a team my team will try and help you out with that. Right, that concludes today's um, webinar. Thank you for everyone who's attended. And I hope you enjoy the rest of your afternoon and have a nice Easter.